In part three, we finished up the 300 block of Huron Avenue on the west side of the street. Now let's cross the street to the east side. We want to look at a store called the Sport Shop that was very popular back in the 40s and 50s. And at one time was in the 200 block of, uh, of Huron Avenue and was also in the 300 block right next to Firestone. If it existed today, it would be actually in the north end of the Gilroy store, about right here. That's the Firestone store there on the left, and there's the sport shop. In addition to all kinds of sporting supplies, they also carried a very high end of toys and was very popular during the Christmas season. Before this, a store by the name of Grand Recreation occupied that site. We, uh, we know in my generation and that Grand Recreation was in the next block, in the 400 block, but previously it was in this location. Before that, it was occupied by the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, which became A&P grocery stores as we knew them. It was in the late 1800s that A&P Still a tea and coffee company became the country's first grocery chain. Okay, let's go next door to the Firestone store. Some people have complained about covering up the architecture with that new facade that they put on uh, back in the 60s. And I guess that was mostly my fault. Uh, I turned my resignation into the company. They asked me why and I told them, well, for one thing, we didn't have any hoists. We were still using jacks. This is okay. We'll take care of that. And I said the inside of the store was uh, deteriorating and uh, was in bad shape. This is okay. We'll take care of that. And I said outside, the sign doesn't work and it's uh, starting to fall apart. He says, okay, we'll take care of it. He says, what else do you want? I said, I'd like to have more money. He says, okay, we'll take care of that. Do you have any reason to quit now? I says, nope. And I stayed with him for another 35 years. In the early days, Firestone carried a little bit of everything. They carried sporting goods, they carried toys during the Christmas season, they carried uh, outboard motors, uh, small appliances, large appliances, and of course, tires and service. This is me on my first 26 inch bike, and it's a Firestone bike, and I guess I thought I was pretty hot stuff there. In this photo where they were tearing down the stores next to Firestone, you can get an idea what the architecture was like and the facade looked like before they put the new one on. The signage here appears to be white lettering, but in reality, Firestone's colors during that period of time was a dark blue and orange. And as we look at this next picture, maybe you can see that. You can't make it out too clearly, but it is orange lettering on a dark blue background. And it's the old fashioned English lettering before they changed their uh, logo. And it also gives you an idea of what the front looks like before they put the new facade on. And the sign you see sticking out from the building, the Firestone sign, is the reason that there's a Firestone sign sticking out of the building today, because it was grandfathered in. Fort Huron didn't want any signs sticking out from the buildings at all. In the early 30s, this building was occupied by the Kroger G&B Company. G and B standing for groceries and bakery. And at uh, one point in time, they took over the corner store as well and had that whole corner to themselves. And in 1904, the building was occupied by a, a business called The Fashion. I thought it might be a clothing store, so I looked it up and it was a store that sold strictly cloaks, C-L-O-A-K-S, cloaks. There must have been quite a demand for a store to just sell cloaks. But then again, it was 1904. I don't know what the official name is, but notice on top of the building there, it had a crown back in this old photo, similar to what the Union Hotel had. All right, let's move next door to where Mosher's is. Of course, uh, this is the second location that I know of for Mosher's. Before this, they were in the 200 block on the opposite side of the street. And so was the clock that stands out front. Here you see a nicely restored building, but it didn't always look that way. When Firestone put their new facade on, 
Uh, Mosier's also had a new facade, and this is what it looked like at that time. Years before that, AMP had a grocery store there. This was after they went from the tea and coffee company to a full-pledged national chain of grocery stores. And so they moved from their location a few doors down and went on the corner as a grocery store for A&P. There was also at one time a BF Goodrich tire store, as you can see in the background to this parade here. Right next door to Firestone, a little friendly competition there. All right, let's cross the street and go to the northwest corner of McMorrin and Huron Avenue. And keep in mind that uh, McMorrin used to be called Broad Street. And this building here, I'm not sure what it is, uh, being away from Port Huron for 12 years, uh, I'm not real familiar with some of the more current buildings, but I am familiar with the old building. It does look like when this picture was taken, the building was for sale or for rent. I believe Google took that picture in 2009. In 1982, we have the same building, not quite so fancy a roof line. It looks like it was occupied by Valente's uh, men's formal wear. But the building I remember housed the Greyhound bus station, Hotel Edison, and the town bar. Here you get a little closer look at the Greyhound bus station. You can see the sign terminal over the front door. And then you go up to the large sign that hangs out from the building. You'll see that it says Great Lakes Greyhound, with the larger word bus just above it. While researching this building, I found out something interesting. Remember on the four corners, on the Wolver's corner, where we had the Pacific Hotel here. And later, uh, we saw the new Pacific Hotel being built there. The information I had made the assumption, I believe, that the new Pacific Hotel was built on the same corner. Um, I think that assumption is wrong because in researching it, I looked back at a 1904 directory and it said it was on the corner of McMorrin and Huron, or in that case, Broad back then. And looking at the architecture of this building, if you look at the front of the building, they have three windows, and then they have a larger window in the middle, and they have three windows. If you look at this later picture, when the Edison was there and the Greyhound bus station was there, you'll see the same formation of windows. Three windows on the left, the middle window uh, separately, and then three windows on the right. The same total of seven windows in the same formation. And the side of the building is the same formation of windows, except uh, on this uh, picture here, uh, the original Pacific Hotel had two stories in the rear. And I think they added one more story, so they made it all the way across the same. On the original picture, you can't really see the bay window extensions that you see here very clearly. You really have to blow the picture up, but they are there. I think one more was added when they made the uh, remodeling on the uh, third story here. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible in these videos, and it's always exciting for me to be able to identify a building from one century to the next. You can't really tell what color these bay window extensions are, but in this next little video clip you will be able to see that they're green. There were other bus companies that used this bus station in Port Huron. And at one time there'd be three or four buses, and at one time they would have them parked diagonally rather than parallel to the curb. Here's another photo that shows a bus station in the background. Let's walk down the block a couple doors, and we have the brass rail on the Coney Island. And I still cannot get used to seeing the Coney Island there. It just seems to me it should be in the other block. But that's progress, I guess. In the 60s, this is where Lung Hong Chop Suey Place was. And then, uh, before that, Ore Hardware was there for a lot of years. Uh, three decades, actually. 20s, 30s, uh, a good share of the 40s. 
In the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, George Stortz had a sample room there. And there were a lot of sample rooms in Port Huron at that time. By this time, you're probably asking yourself, what in the world is a sample room? And I wasn't uh, too sure myself, so I did some research on it. A sample room was a way for a salesman to display their wares without renting a meeting room or having the wares displayed in their hotel room. It was advantageous both for the salesman and for the place that was having the sample room. And there were a lot of them in Port Huron, as you could see from this directory here, there was over 50 of them. Almost all the hotels had sample rooms, some had more than one sample room. And most of the large businesses had sample rooms as well. And then there were separate buildings, separate businesses, such as Mr. Stortz here, that had nothing but a sample room in this uh, store. And it could be two or three different sample rooms. This advertisement that we saw was for liquor and for wine, but, but it could be for anything, as you'll see in these next pictures. These next two pictures that you see is a sample room for toys. Everything from sleds to dolls. The sample rooms was a forerunner to catalogs and online shopping. This is an ad for a sample room in Connecticut. The sample room has tables in it. And I'm not too sure what this woman has to do with selling tables, but maybe it's just to get your attention. The sample room here would have looked very much like uh, Mr. Storch's uh, sample room on Huron Avenue, probably. And like I said, they were very popular all over the country. Here's one even in Alaska. The brass rail seems like it's been around forever. Uh, before my time in the 30s, it was called the Tavern Lelux. Not Deluxe, but Lelux. And in 1924, it was a candy store or confectionery. Then in 1904, it was a grocery store and a fruit store. And they specialized in prompt delivery according to their ads. And in 1899, it was a feed store. It would be nice to have a picture of all those, but we don't. Let's walk down to the end of the block. I remember this end of the block looking something like this. For the unique restaurant on the corner, and then right next to that was Grand Recreation. And that was a place where you could get cigars, tobacco, magazines, novelties, and in the back there was a pool room. And that's what the 400 block looked like in the generation that I grew up with. This concludes part four of Fort Erin Past and Present. In part five, we'll be looking at uh, the view across the street, where McMorrin is and where the courthouse used to be, as well as some other buildings like the jail and the firehouse.